Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. Now, today's podcast, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different. Um, Big Four Accounting Firms have announced a lot of new things for mid-year compensation and just for COVID in general. And one of those is these allowances for working from home. They give you some money. And it's good in some respects because they give you about $1,000 for most of the firms, including internationally. Uh, in turn, UK is probably like 500 pounds. But how do you use this? Well, I think one of the most important things is your desk. Your desk and like all the other accessories that you're going to need. Because a lot of times you don't want to work at your desk. You want to work in your bed. So you need like one of those laptop stands. Amazon has a good one. Um, I'll probably link that one in the show notes. But the other one, uh, I just wanted to get people's ideas on what their setup is because I'm trying to improve my setup, but I wanted to get my thoughts on it because I think there's some important things that people need to think about. Some people like using a standing desk, which is fine, but you can't stand all day long while you're while you're working from home and, you know, long hours at big four accounting firms. So it can be a standing desk. And I think standing desks are good too. And, uh, you know, if you want to have a treadmill too, but the other thing too, about setting a treadmill setup, I've been looking into this cause I've been looking into getting a treadmill just for home to get some exercise or you know, get, get the blood flowing while you're working. There, there's like an accessory on Amazon where, or multiple accessories that allows you like, Put like a desk on top of your your treadmill. It, it's like a flat board that goes on top of the the treadmill handles. And alternatively, another way to do that is to have a standing desk, and below that, to have like one of those where it's just the foot part of the treadmill, the walking part of the treadmill. Uh, you know, as people try to be more fit, alternatively, you could just leave your house and walk around or do whatever exercise, but Sometimes you might be wanting to get some easy exercise like walking slow while you're working. So that's why I mentioned that. Um, but so you can use a standing desk for multiple things to stand and work. You can also use it to sit down and work or you can use it to, to put above one of those uh, lower parts of a treadmill. But the, there's other things you have to think about when you're when you're setting up your desk. And. I wanted to give some advice on that because to me, the desks that I like the most are the ones where it's got basically a three tiered setup where you have the flat desk part and you have monitor stands. And then you also have like a keyboard area down below. And the reason I say that is because it's, it's nice to, to have those three different levels for like optimal sitting, because if you, if you have your keyboard on your desk, a lot of desks are too high about like 30 inches or higher. And you know, that that's the easiest way to get carpal tunnel or various other wrist problems. Where if you have a keyboard area below your desk, typically that's more, it's a more optimal ergonomic way to work. And it's just the best way that I've worked over the years. And then also the laptop stand. So you have your flat desk, or not your laptop stand, a monitor stand. So you have your flat desk, and you're going to have a laptop on there because the big four accounting firms give you a laptop to work from. And then you want your monitors above that. And you're going to need multiple monitors if you work in the big four accounting firms, especially if you're at a lower level. And you can get those monitor the monitor extenders, the monitor poles where you you basically take off the stand of your monitor and then you you put one of these laptop or the monitor arms to it, like you screw it in. And those are fine, but if you get a bigger monitor, those typically don't work. And a lot of those monitor arms tend to fail on bigger monitors. They work for the smaller monitors, like 22 inches. So that, that's another reason why I like the three-tiered where you have a keyboard area, the flat desk, and then 
um, the monitor stands. And one website I found, and let me know in the comments on YouTube which ones you like, but I found a desk company and they're basically what comes up first as a Google ad when you search for standing desk and it's uplift desk. And the reason I like them, I haven't ordered the desk yet, but is because it has so many customizations. It, it, it customizes the, the width um, of the desk, whether you want an L shape desk or just a, a regular desk. Uh, the depth seems pretty standard. It's 30 inches. I think they have a 24 inch, but I wouldn't go with the 24 inch. Uh, 24 inch depth is not big enough desk. You need at least 30 inches. Uh, I would try to get the 60 inch wide desk at a minimum, if not wider, depending on like how much stuff you'd like to have on your desk. You might have another laptop because I like to have a laptop while I'm working uh, another one or another computer just so you can look at stuff, uh, personal stuff while you're working. You don't want to be using your work laptop for personal stuff for various reasons. So you might, you want some space for another laptop, another personal area, or you might just want, you know, maybe a tablet off to the side, something like that. Uh, but, but I mean, it's, if you're going to be working from home and you're spending a lot of time, you want to sort of optimize your area, I guess is what I'm getting to. And this uplift desk, another thing they have is, is you can put those. So I was talking about monitor stands. They allow you to do that. And I would get the sturdy, the sturdier desk because some of these standing desks, when you order them, they're not very sturdy. They can get wobbly pretty fast. Uh, so th th that's that's why I'm talking about this. It's important to optimize your space, and you shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't go cheap on it, especially if you have you're going to be reimbursed for it. Is what I'm saying. Don't go. You don't need to be spending five thousand dollars on a desk. And another thing too that you don't need to be spending a lot of money on is your is your chair. A lot of people try and get crazy on their chairs, but there's some pretty good, just regular basic desk chairs. Uh, I think WorkPro has some really good uh, office chairs as far as that goes. You don't need to go crazy. You don't need to get Herman Miller and all that stuff or a gaming chair or anything like that. But also just let me know in the comments on YouTube what you guys use. Um, another thing too that, that I think could be useful is, you know, maybe you want to watch TV um, or, you know, I don't, I don't know if your TV is close to your desk, things like that. So you might want like a little roller stand to have another TV or a desk to watch that you can move around to optimize your working space. There's just a lot of things you can think about, about working, about optimizing your workspace, keeping yourself from getting bored keeping yourself interested, and that's why you'd have a TV off to the side, a laptop off to the side. You just have to think about these things as you work. Uh, you're also not going to want to work at your desk all the time, so that's why I recommend getting that that other accessory of that you can use, uh, like if you're laying in your bed where the laptop isn't directly on you because a lot of the laptops in the big four, especially if they're HP, will overheat. The fans are really bad and the, and the laptops overheat, so you don't want to be uh, overheating yourself. So it's it just keep it just rests it there, allows the space for you to rest your wrists, things like that. Um, anything else as far as the desk? Like I said, as far as the desk, I would I would make sure it has the sturdy it has sturdy legs. Um, it's able to go up and down if it's a standing desk. You don't want a desk that's like constantly raised because you're not going to want to stand all day long, like I said. Um, you want to make sure that you have monitor, the monitor stands. And Uplift Desk allows you to build monitor stands on there. They allow you to put those monitor arms too, but like I said, I want to get those. The monitor stands I would get. How many monitors do you need? I would say at least two monitors. You have your laptop would be in the middle of your desk or somewhere on your desk. And then behind it would be the two monitors and you don't want them on the same level as your laptop because if they're on the same level as your laptop your laptop's going to be blocking the monitors and you might think like you don't care about that but you're going to care about it at some point that's why you need those those monitor stands because it's going to raise it above the laptop and so if you have a laptop and two monitors you essentially have a three monitor setup right there 
If you want more, Uplift allows you to put up to three up to three monitor stands on there. So you could have three. If you get a bigger desk, like one of those L desks, you could put even more. Uh, or I don't know. If, I don't think they let you put more on there, but you could put more monitors at a later point. Uh, if you use those monitor arms, they do allow you to build like one of those huge monitor arrays. But I don't know if people <laughs> really need that. They're not. I don't think many people here are like currency traders or anything like that. But and another thing that they allow you to do is they allow you to select from different materials, uh, and, and they explain the difference in all their materials. Again, they allow you to to get a bigger desk, a wider desk than than most other places will. Uh, ways to optimize your wires different power plugs, different ways to raise up your desk. And there's other websites like this too, but I think this is the first one I've seen where it allows you to fully customize your desk uh, because the, that's another reason why I've held off on, I have a standing desk now, but it's, it's kind of annoying the way you use it. It's not as sturdy. So I've been holding off until I found a good one. So I might pull the trigger on this, but just in general, I wanted to give people advice and ideas on on my experience of working from home like the accessories that i use the things that i think about when i'm working from home um the best setup because i, I know it's a little bit it can be a little bit difficult some people are probably just rocking the laptop with one monitor and that's fine but there there are better ways <laughs> having more monitors in the big four accounting firms does make life easier like i don't think you could really have too many monitors uh, I don't know if you need the huge monitor arrays, but tons of monitors help. It just makes it way easier. Also, when you're on Microsoft Teams or Zoom or Google Hangouts, it's if you have multiple monitors, you can dedicate one monitor as your like sharing monitor when you're talking to people versus only sharing your desktop. So these there's a lot of things to think about uh, when you're setting up your working from home setup. Uh, not only to make it ergonomically useful to yourself, but to keep yourself from getting bored. And that's why I mentioned those other things like the treadmill, the desk for your bed, the accessory. And, and those accessories that you use like as a laptop stand in your bed or a little laptop a, a accessory for your treadmill, those aren't that expensive. Those are cheap. So if you're going to mod those out, then, then that shouldn't be too hard. But as far as your main desk, especially since it would be an investment and you're getting reimbursed, you want to make sure you do it right. You don't want to just pull the trigger on something basic. You, you want to use that towards something that are going to last you a long time. Cause I have a desk that's lasted me a long time. Uh, so well, I have two desks and both of them lasted me a long time, but they're not optimal is what I'm saying. You, you want to just have the optimal setup from the beginning. You don't have to think about it. Uh, and, just put yourself on the best foot. And that's why I'm trying to give advice on this, because I think if if people understand how they work or people understand the best optima, op, optimal way to work, then they can order the right thing from the beginning. So if you're thinking about buying a desk, uh, listen back to this and think about all the things. Think of how you work. Think of how you sit at a desk, how you, all the things you're going to be doing, all the accessories. Because that's another thing too, why why I, I mentioned the depth in the desk too is you need good depth because laptop keyboards are normally not good. And so you're going to want another keyboard, like a wireless keyboard from Logitech. Logitech has all good accessories as far as keyboards and mice. You're going to want another, you're going to want an external mouse and another keyboard. So you're going to have your laptop. You're going to need another keyboard. And that's another reason I like those lower keyboard things because you're going to have your wireless down there, your laptop on your desk. And if you have your laptop on your desk and a keyboard on your desk, that's a lot of depth you're using up. You're, you're probably max out your, and, and on top of that, those monitor stands, you're going to max out your depth already. So it's going to be very jumbled up. And so that's why you need that lower part for the keyboard. So just listen back to this as you're thinking of your setup. Think of the way you work, the way you've worked in the past in the big four county for maybe in the office when you used to work in the office. 
and use that to figure out your configuration. But that's the podcast for today. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast to get future updates. Check out the show notes of the podcast for useful links. And let me know in the comments on YouTube your optimal setup. Thanks for listening.